Welcome. We are just coming together to choose to praise God, to choose to acknowledge and realize that we are in his presence. The The topic, the theme is the presence of God, and we are one with his spirit if we've given our lives to him. Welcome. And um, we are present with God, and God doesn't leave us or forsake us. Like it says, draw near to God, and he'll draw near to us. He's there. And so we get to look at that, go through his word, praise him together. It's going to be good. So I'm just going to open in prayer. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you are praiseworthy. I thank you that you are good. I thank you that you don't leave us or forsake us, that we can be present with you if we just turn to you, like we we turn to God, the veil is lifted and we see you and um we're transformed from one higher level of glory to another. So we just thank you for that. Help us to all be present with you more in Jesus name. Amen. So the scriptures we are starting out with, and I am just a sec. So we're starting with Genesis three, because it's how does it all start? We were designed in the image of God to be in relationship with God face to face with him. And if Genesis 3, 8 is after Adam and Eve have fallen to the temptation of the enemy and original sin has begun. So it says, and this will all be in Brian Standard Bible, unless I say otherwise, it says, then the man and his wife heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the breeze of the day, and they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. So they saw God and who had come to walk with them, and they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord out of shame and guilt of sin. It doesn't say God ran away from them. God actually came to them and like did the first sacrifice of an animal and gave them clothing. But yeah, he, he didn't walk away from them. They hid from his presence and Jesus has washed us clean. We don't need to hide from the presence of God. So, ah, yeah. Then we're going to go to Genesis four, where, uh, Cain has just murdered his brother, Abel. So Cain and Abel are Adam and Eve's children. So it's Genesis 4, 10 through 16. And it says, what have you done? Replied the Lord. The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are cursed and banished from the ground because there is punishment for sin. Jesus has paid it now, but there is then you are cursed and banished from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it will no longer yield its produce to you. You will be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. But Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, this day you have driven me from the face of the earth and from your face, from your face, I will be hidden. So Cain is speaking this, but God didn't actually state that in his wording. So he's saying, I'll be, I'll be hidden. And then it says, I will be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth and whoever finds me will kill me. Not so, replied the Lord. If anyone slays Cain, then Cain will be avenged sevenfold. And the Lord placed a mark on Cain so that no one who found him would kill him. That is amazing, super abundant grace. He just murdered his own brother and there is punishment, but there's also protection in it. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> and then it says, so Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod east of Eden. So Cain left the presence of the Lord. So um, he, yeah, we, we don't need to hide from God. Like I said, we're not them. We have been washed clean by the blood of the lamb and we, our, our spirit is one with him. So let's get our soul to acknowledge what our spirit knows and what God knows that we can be in the presence of the Lord. We don't need to be separated from him. So I just thought we should praise God for the abundant grace um, in the Cain story that he had and the abundant grace he has for us. We should praise him that he's not the one who walked away and um, that he wants to be present with us because it's pretty awesome. And so the song is he's or the song is worthy of it all. And I exalt thee by Sean Fute. That was in Times Square. And 
it's going to be good. So enjoy. I will just share screen now and play. Any work? from you are all things and to you are all things you deserve the glory come on somebody sing with me you are worthy of it all you are worthy of it all for from you and to you are all things you deserve the glory you are worthy of it all you are worthy of it all for from you are all things and to you from you are all things and to you are all things you deserve the glory come on sing i exalt thee come on let's just sing that out and i exalt thee <laughs>
We lift you high over this city. We say there is no king but King Jesus. Amen. And yeah, it's ah, beautiful. And I am just praising God for them doing songs like that. And well, yes, I didn't pause it on purpose because it's open to anybody. Because that's how it's posted online. It's amazing. So anyway, I just so just going back in Genesis, we learn that God isn't the one that walked away from us. Um, he wants to be in our present presence, right? He wants to know us personally, have communion. Jesus, Father God gave Jesus and Jesus took everything on so that um, we could be always present with God. I know he is omnipresent, but we need to acknowledge and be aware and have true fellowship and relationship with him. He didn't walk away from that. So um, there is, you know, people that decide not to have a relationship with God. There is a penalty and the penalty is permanent destruction away from the presence of the Lord. So those who of us who have chosen to have a relationship with him, it is life in the presence of the Lord. So second Sorry, Second Thessalonians. Let me repost the scriptures and songs here. Um, Second Thessalonians 1 9 says they will suffer the penalty of eternal destruction. That's who didn't choose Jesus, separated from the presence of the Lord and the glory of his might. We are not separated from that. So yeah, we get to receive what Jesus did for us, paid for us to be in the presence of the Lord and not have eternal destruction. So we get to realize and acknowledge he's literally in us one spirit with us and um if we obey god we get the holy spirit so acts 5 32 says we are witnesses of these things and so is the holy spirit whom god has given to those who obey him and it's just simple and i mean we know the commandments aren't burdensome right they're oh it's you know to love to love father out of the overflow of the love he has for us and to love our others as we love ourselves but john 14 20 21 says on that day you will know so this is jesus talking on that day you will know that i am in my father so jesus is in his father and you are in me we're in jesus and i am in you jesus is in us i know in the natural that doesn't make any sense i love the doggy anyway um Whoever has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and reveal myself to him. So, yeah. And again, the keeping of the commandments, it's receiving God's love and overflowing it onto others and ourselves. And because we have to love others as we love ourselves. So we have to receive that love first for ourselves. And we are loved by the father and Jesus. And it says he will reveal himself to us, right? We're in his presence. He's making himself known to us. So let's receive it. And, um, and I do think the animals love joining in on all of this. I just think they love it all because they like to worship. They know who God is anyway. Um, so yeah. And well, God has revealed himself to us. Re re um, and reveal myself to him. It means to exhibit, to appear in person, to declare, to manifest or express outwardly, to declare plainly. So God shows himself to us, right? So we get to obey God, make room for the Holy Spirit. Um, oh yeah. And that's the song, make room, make room. Um, it is Josu Avila Calvary Orlando worship and uh, enjoy. <laughs> It'll be good. And just yeah, sing it as a prayer. Like the Holy Spirit's in you here. You got the whole Holy Spirit, but it's kind of that really let him take over because it's better.
where I lay it down Every burden, every crown This is my surrender This is my surrender Here is where I lay it down Every lie and every doubt This is my surrender Come on, let's sing this all together, say And I will make room for you To do whatever you want to To do whatever you want to Come on and lift up your voice I will make room for you Calvary, let's sing this all together. Say, Here is where I lay it down. Every burden, every ground. This is my surrender. Oh, this is my surrender. This is my surrender. Oh, here is where I lay it down. Every lie and every
is where I lay it down You are all I'm chasing now This is my surrender So shake up the ground of all my traditions Break down the walls of all my religion Your way is better Your way is better And shake up the ground of all my tradition Break down the walls of all my religion your way is better, your way is better. Come on, everybody say, shake up the ground of all my tradition. Your way is better. Oh, yes, it is. Shake up the ground of all my tradition. so good i just we're gonna lay down all our burdens and we were talking in praising through god's word earlier today about how we are to cast our cares on him our burdens on him he paid for them so be obedient and hand them over don't hold on to them and it was like that image of that's what's separating us from realizing we're in the presence of the lord so just lay it all down your past your everything it's not to make excuses for it it's to walk in the fullness of the freedom of it we don't need to make excuses i mean cain killed his brother <laughs> and uh i know that jesus hadn't paid for him to be fully set free yet so it's different but god protected him like there's so much we don't yeah we don't need to have excuses for all our old behaviors we just get to walk clean and and be in the presence of god so um, I will say it said, um, like you're all I'm chasing now. I love the image of that of like all I care about, all I'm focused on, all I'm just wanting to be in my time and energy and everything is God. But really, we're not chasing God because we we've found him. <laughs> um, we're one with him. So I know it's just a good image, but I just want to make sure everybody knows that we're not chasing God. Um, we have him, and I'm just Sorry, getting the next video. Hold the big screen real quick. But um, we have fullness of joy in the presence of God. And we are in the presence of God. So Acts 2, 28 to, or 25 to 28 and verses 31 to 32, we're going to read. And it's really, um, we learn in this that Psalm 16, a David song was, was actually Jesus speaking through David. It says, David says about him. I saw the Lord always before me because he at he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. Let's have a rejoicing tongue. <laughs> my body also will dwell in hope. And that's make our home settle down, make our home in, in hope. And we got the God of hope. That's a good place to dwell. Anyway, I didn't notice that when I read it before, but because you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. 
You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. And a lot of the versions say there is fullness of joy in your presence. We're filled with joy in the presence of God. And we're in the presence of God. Um, but we get to acknowledge that and lay everything down that separates us from really realizing we are. Foreseeing this, David spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his body see decay because he was raised again, right? God was ra has raised this Jesus to life to which we are all witnesses. So then Psalm 1611 says, you have made known to me the path of light, right? Life, as we keep, we acknowledge him in all our ways. He makes our paths straight. So we get to look at him and he lights our path and lights our feet or lamps. The word is a light to our path and lamp to our feet, something like that. <laughs> Psalm 119, 105, look it up. Anyway, um, and it says, you will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. So we are at the right hand of the father because we're seated in Christ, but it's just that acknowledging that we're in Christ, not exhaustingly doing it on our own striving and strength and resting in him and yeah, seeking him moment to moment. Exactly. And I feel like even that I'm like, oh, exhausting if I think of it in the flesh way, but in the spirit way, it's like, ah, oh, just, yeah, keeping, keeping my eyes stayed on him and there's peace in that. So I get to keep doing it and it is good. And John 15, nine through 10 says, as the father has loved me. So this is Jesus again, as the father has loved Jesus, so have I loved you. So, so has Jesus loved us. Remain in my love. We want to remain in Jesus's love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my father's commandments and remain in his love. And remember his commandments, receive God's love, love him back with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength and love others, others as ourselves. So it is good. And the song we're going to play to just let us kind of sink in those scriptures is I love your presence by Sean Fute. And yeah, I mean, in, in his presence, there's fullness of joy and all of that good stuff. So let's praise him as we sing this song. Your presence 
Jesus. Come on, sing it with me. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love it. I love it. I love. I love you, Jesus. I love, I love, and I'm loving your presence. good yes all beautiful and just we get to acknowledge again that we're in sorry, the presence of the lord so we get to make that choice to realize we're present with him or not and we get to choose not to walk away from god or like adam and eve hid from the presence of the lord cain walked away i feel like we just chalk up burdens and trauma and negative thoughts and self-hate or whatever between us and God, but he's there. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> that's good. Sure. <laughs> um, so John 15, five through eight says, I am the vine. So again, Jesus is talking. I am the vine and you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit. So we are in him, he's in us, but it's again that how much are we letting the, the spirit 
How much are we being led by the spirit where there's life and peace or by the flesh where there's death? So we want to bear much fruit. So acknowledge that we're in him and let him work through us and transform us. So it says for apart from me, you can do nothing. And we can look at that and go, I sorry, like, that's mean, <laughs> but it's so nice because again, I don't have to do it in my own strength. Like this is not, we can do nothing. Of course I can do things, but it's nothing in the heavenly realm. Like it's not to the glory of our father in heaven. So it is nothing anyway. Um, and it's freedom. So it says, if anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are gathered up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. So we know that's quite a statement, right? But as we're remaining in him, being loved by him, receiving that love, washing it through us, um, handing it on to others, like we and his words are remaining in us. Like we're, that's what we're thinking about muttering and perseverating on, um, we can ask whatever we wish because our our um, will aligns with his then, right? Like we're, we're, our hearts are aligning with his. And it says, you know, if we ask according to his will, we know that he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, he's already done whatever we ask of him. That's somewhere in first John, a few chapters in or so, I think chapter four. Anyway, but back to this one. <laughs> If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit, proving yourselves to be my disciples. So it glorifies our father in heaven when we bear fruit from being in Jesus. And it proves that we're his disciples. Like it says that Jesus, um, he said, look to the works that I do to even see who I am and glorify my father in heaven. So it's not our own works, right? It's the, the Holy spirit working through us, but it's good stuff. So anyway, we get to remain with him. He doesn't kick us out and he wants us to have joy in uh, John 15, nine through 12. So just the next few verses, it says as a father. Oh yeah. As the, I'm like, that's the same. It's so repetitive. He just keeps saying this stuff. I haven't read it yet. As the father has loved me, so have I loved you. Remain in my love. If anyone keeps my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. See, he wants us to have his joy in him and have complete joy. Um, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. So ah, it is good. So we get to choose to praise God, choose to acknowledge that he's with us. And we um, come before him with joyful singing and praise. And so um, it, it it connects us to it. He inhabits the praises of his people. So we get to make that choice. So um, the song we're going to play is Praise You Every Day, Melody of Verses. So enjoy. salvation protects me Lord you are great Lord you are great I praise you praise you every day thank you for your grace guiding me on the right way I praise you praise you every day thank you for your grace Guiding me on the right way I praise you, praise you every day Thank you for your grace Guiding me on the right way I praise you, praise you every day Thank you for the grace Guiding me on the right way Your shines on my life your words bring peace to my heart in the darkness you are my light I'm leading me forward Lord you are 
Thank you, God, for guiding us on the right way, being the light that oh, directs our path. And we choose to acknowledge God in all our ways. We choose to praise him. It is so good. And um, we're going to read John 16, 15, that says, everything that belongs to the Father is mine. That's Jesus again. <laughs> everything that belongs to the Father is Jesus's. That is why I said to, I said that the Spirit will take from what is mine and disclose it to you. Like make it to announce it, bring word, show, make known. So we are, yeah, it, he's making it known to us that we're co-heirs with Christ Jesus. Anyway, it's good. So John 17, three through five says now, now this is eternal life that they may know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. That's eternal life that we know him, that we're in his presence. So he wants us to know him. Anyway, I have glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work you gave me to do. So, and then it says, and now father glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world existed. So the, Jesus glorified the Father by doing the works of the Lord. It says, like, we're glorifying our Father in heaven as we shine his light, as we let the, the fruits of um, the Holy Spirit come through us. And the word um, glory is acknowledging God and his true character, rendering glorious, magnify. Um, and it's just so, like... I don't know. I think we think of it as just like a light or something. And it's, it's, it's exalting his true nature and character. It's, it's showing him And John 17, 10 says, all I have is yours and all you have is mine. And in them, I have been glorified. So in us, Jesus is glorified. I'm still thinking on that one because <laughs> it's pretty big. Um, but I mean, yeah, we're glorifying our father in heaven. So we get to acknowledge who we are and what God has done. So verses 22 and 23 of John 17 says, I have given them the glory you gave me. So Jesus has given us the glory that God gave him so that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me that they may be perfectly united so that the world may know that you sent me and have loved them just as you have loved me. So yeah, it, the, the word for glory, it's that the nature and acts of God, his manifestations, how he reveals himself. So it's to outwardly express the glory of God, his marvelous works, right? And we're made in the image of God. So um, the song we're going to play is Imago Dei. 
which is in the image of God, Imago Dei. And we are made in his image and we are to glorify him. And so it's just beautiful. We are in his presence. We can't radiate the glory of God unless we're in his presence. So we just get to acknowledge it. So Imago Dei, this is um, Sean Fute again. They're in the National Mall in Washington, D.C., apparently in this one. <laughs> Pretty cool. Come on, just lift your hands with me. Just lift your hands with me. Lord, release identity over America. Release identity. Release sonship to them. Before I was formed, I was loved and adored by a father who knows me by name. You sewed me together in bed treasure inside of a soul and a frame imago day i'm fearfully wonderfully made imago day there's glory Conception, my home was in heaven, then you breathed your life in my lungs. Your perfect design that you purposed in time, holy made in the image of God. Come on, sing this out, I am made. I am made in the image of God.
And indeed, if there is glory in all he creates, we are made in the image of God and we're not just made in his image. We've decided to redirect, repent, turn to him, be made new. And our spirit is one with his spirit. And we are in the presence of God and in the glory of God. And we just don't always realize it. So we're realizing it and we're asking you, God, to help us realize it more every day. We're going to read Haggai 2, 6 through 9 for it says, because uh, it, it says, for this is what the Lord of hosts says, once more in a little while, I will shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all the nations and they will come with all their treasures. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord of hosts. So everything, you know, comes from the Father. It says the latter glory of this house will be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will provide peace, declares the Lord of hosts. And, we you know, we are the house, the temple of the Holy Spirit. And it's filled with glory greater than the former glory. Like if we look at the temple in the old covenant, it had the glory of the Lord and um, it was glorious. Right. And, but there wasn't peace between God and man. And now there is because there's that separation with sin that caused the shame and hiding from the presence of the Lord. That's gone. We get to acknowledge that he's washed us clean. And so it's pretty amazing because of what Jesus did. And um, Psalm 100 is, I feel like, what we should do about that, that he's made us the temple of the Lord. He's made us present with him. Uh, we don't have to hide from his presence. We don't have to run from his presence. We don't have to walk away from his presence. He's not doing it. So we're not going to. And we're going to fully face him and, you know, yeah, be transformed to one level of glory to another. And um, so I just, yeah, thank you for that, Lord. So we're going to do Psalm 100. It says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. So we can choose to make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. And then it says, serve the Lord with gladness. So we can choose to serve the Lord with gladness or with, you know, ugh. so we're going to choose to serve the Lord with gladness <laughs> and then come into his presence with joyful songs. So we're in his presence, but we're going to choose like that, that choosing to joyfully sing before the Lord changes our thoughts and those burdens that we're holding on to and those distractions. Like, it's like it lays them aside and we get to realize that we're, we're singing before the Lord. It says, know that the Lord is good, right? We're learning that we're learning so much about the truth of God and that he is good. It is he who made us. We're made in his image and we are his and we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And it says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. So we're going to choose to come to him, thanking him for what he's done and praising him for his amazing nature and character and give thanks to him, it says, and bless his name. And for the Lord is good and his loving devotion endures forever. His faithfulness continues to all generations. And yeah, I'm just laughing because I left one kitty's food out and the other kitty just devoured it. But um, and it's okay because <laughs> I thought it was the other kitty eating it anyway. <laughs> so off topic maybe, but it's in my view and it's not a distraction because it's laughter anyway. Maybe it is, but... <laughs> I thank you, God, for kitties and their sillinesses. Um, but <laughs> we are going to choose to make a joyful noise to the Lord, right? Sing it louder. God's with us. So the, the song that we're going to play, oh, I forgot to string it down and bring the next one up. It's so different doing it this way. I'm just getting used to my little pattern, but um, is louder. Sean Fute. Um, they're live from Tulsa in this one. And, um, but it says, God is with us. We're surrounded by his goodness. Uh, no, he's never going to leave you. Nothing's going to stop us singing your praise. So we are going to choose to say that, that nothing's going to stop us singing your praise. And yeah, um, 
that the, the animals are fearfully and wonderfully made too. Maybe not in God's image, but they love to praise God as well. So it is good. And they are a gift to us. And so I praise God for my kitty cats and my doggy. Um, so anyway, but we are going to praise God louder because he is awesome. So this is our last song and I will share my screen now. Come on, you got to put your hands together. Yeah, there we go. Come on, he's so good. He's so good. He's so good. Come on, let's go. Surrounded by His goodness Sing it louder if you found grace As you walk into a new day In the valley of the victory No, He's never gonna leave me Sing it louder through the failure Aren't you glad we've got to say Nothing's gonna stop us Singing your praise Nothing in the world can stand in the way of all God's people lifting Jesus up. You're never gonna silence hearts of late. Shout a hallelujah to his name. All God's people come.
I just love that, you know, nothing's going to stop us singing his praise. And it just makes me think, you know, the enemy definitely tries to stop us, but we're not going to stop praising God. And that's partly why it's important to separate what's from God and what's from the enemy. Because if we get those confused, which I know I had in the past, and I think everybody who's on right now live <laughs> had in the past, then it gets really hard to praise him because it's really confusing. And God seems like he's different all the time. And we're not that's not the God we're, we're, our God is steady. Welcome. Our God is steady and sure. And his word is forever settled in heaven. And so we get to praise him and don't let the enemy stop you from praising God. Don't let the world stop you from praising God. Don't let persecution stop you from praising God. Don't let people just thinking you're weird, <laughs> stop you from praising God because he's praiseworthy. So it is good. And, uh, I'm going to just close us in prayer and, uh, if you want to join us live, just janetmassey.com, subscribe at the bottom of the page, and you'll get the email with the Zoom link. Anyway, so <laughs> it's great. So God, I just thank you for this community that we get to praise you together, that we get to have that accountability to choose praise, to choose to worship you together, to choose to just sink into your word and let it wash through us and change us. And we just ask that you do that more with us every day. And we do ah, submit ourselves to you. We do choose to praise you. We do choose to come before you with joyful song and serve you with gladness. So we just thank you for what you're doing in our lives here today. And we praise you and we want to glorify you in heaven in Jesus name. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to end the recording now.